Hi everyone, this is James from the Freemasons and welcome to our very first tutorial on our new technical YouTube channel explaining some of the tricks and tips for audio mixing that we've picked up through the years. Uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about in a series of tutorials across Ableton, um, Logic and Reason is parallel processing. Um, parallel processing is a technique we use all the time and it allows you very simply and with a lot of control to turn quite dull drum loops like this into this kind of sound. With full control. And that will give you a kind of rough idea of what we're going to achieve here. So look, we're going to start from fresh. I'll delete everything there. Um, and in the traditional manner, let's go about our kind of daily process as we normally would do. We've got a drum loop like that that we need to add some more life to. We need to add some top end, we need to add some bottom and some crunch. Um, and traditionally what we do, this is Ableton, so we'll just select the track here and along the bottom we just drop effects in a serial manner into here. For example, we'll put an EQ and we'll start to just tweak the top. But something weird happens and it always seems to happen with digital EQs on particularly on drum loops like this it's almost like it's a bit harsh it's a bit brittle and it's not exactly and you can sit there and tweak with all of the different curves and you know add, add a little bit here subtract a little bit there but the more EQ you do the kind of more damage you can often do I'm going to show you a much more simple technique so uh, we're going to start uh, with our audio channel here in lives built in effects go to audio effect rack and drop it on uh, to the channel. Now, as you can see, it will say drop audio effects here. You have a kind of um, almost a placeholder for the different effects. I'm just going to click on this little icon just here, and that um, brings up a whole series of informations and these uh, th this kind of virtual rack that you're allowed to build up. Now, this automatically works in parallel. Um, so, first of all, not doing anything as you can hear that's because we need to create some chains in it so we're going to create our dry chain first so control click on a Mac and I think it's right click on a PC uh, create chain that's the only option that comes up in this in this section here so we've created a chain let's turn it on uh, it's completely dry it has no effects on it and we're going to leave it exactly as it stands so we always have the original information coming through very important so I'm just going to rename that uh, we'll call that dry. And now I'm going to create another chain. And I'm going to do that just by simply dropping this EQ8 directly underneath our dry channel. What that's going to do is create a new chain. So this is what's happening. The audio is coming from this loop and it is going to in equal amounts to both of these channels. Now there's one thing that you need to know about this you're adding it's very it's it's a compound effect what we're doing here so this it can happen let me just show you the difference so I turn it off and you hear the level jump there now because we're going to be adding a whole series of these chains as you saw from the beginning there it's worth just to pull the beginning part of this down so we'll take it down to just under minus uh, minus five I'm going to pull this one down about the same now I'm going to apply as you can see, you can solo the individual chains here. I'm going to solo just this EQ chain. We'll call this top end. Just rename it quickly. And I'm going to add some pretty serious top fairly quickly as well. So that's kind of as we were before. Let's pull it down a bit. So affecting quite a lot of the drum loop now. And I'm even going to go a little bit further and just peak out about 10 which is where the high hat between 8 and 10 where the high hats tend to sit so even more now that's not the kind of sound that you'd want on your um, hi-hat channel uh, sorry on your drum track you'd uh, it would just sound far too brittle and a bit nasty but look what happens now I'm going to bring it all the way down these are individual level sliders for the different chains take the solo off so both are playing at the same time remember we've got our dry channel here and now our one with top end and what I'm going to do is slowly bring in our EQ version. So this is before. It's there, but it's it's a little dull. We add in this, and you can hear that that 
EQ starts to come in, but in a less brittle way than it may have done before. So let's give it a tiny bit more. Um, now I'm going to quickly jump in and create. Another train, another chain here, sorry, for the bottom end. I'm going to solo it so I can hear what I'm doing. We're going to use just the peak. Grab it up there. And I'm going to EQ out, or EQ, bring out those real kick drum frequencies in this. Not going to touch anything else. Now, again, bring the channel down, playback, and look at what happens as I start to feed that bottom end in. Now, bearing in mind, this is what that bottom end sounded off just in solo. It's bringing out the kick drum, but it's not the kind of EQ curve you'd want across your whole loop. But bringing it in parallel allows you to do this. So this is where we started. And this is where we are now. So already I hope you can hear that everything is starting to sound fuller and richer, but without those kind of general EQ problems that you would have if you just stuck an EQ on it and started mucking about. Um, there is another great um, uh, kind of reason for doing this, is that it allows you actual control, automatable control, over certain elements throughout the track. So say you needed to bring the top end up, particularly on a vocal, just in one section, you could automate that top end channel. Um, it's it's far cleaner than actually automating an EQ in a game because that can bring all sorts of problems into your mix. Okay, so I'm going to quickly bash through a couple of other things. One of the um, the first uses of parallel processing was parallel compression. And let me show you just how far you can go with compression now when you're using it in parallel. So we'll call this Squish. And I'm going to solo it and I'm going to go to town on it. Bring the fader right down, do watch your speaker levels. Maximum. And you hear almost the front, you can hear that the front of the drums is almost completely gone. It's not the kind of compression you'd ever want um, to apply to a loop uh, in serial. But look at what happens as I start to feed it in. It's almost an instant way to turn any kind of fairly flat drum loop into a breakbeat, it just brings out all of the body of the drums. Now, this is just a drum thing, so imagine what this would do on a synth part with delays and reverbs floating about. You can really go to town with all this kind of stuff. Uh, quickly, let me just show you another brilliant one. We're going to drop a reverb on. Now, obviously, reverbs have dry and wet controls. I'm going to push this all the way into the wet, and I'm going to bring the decay time down just so we get a kind of fairly cardboardy version of the reverb. Yep. Apply some compression. Apply some compression there to the reverb. Call this room. And now I'm going to bring this up slowly. And I find, uh, obviously, many of these controls that we're talking about, even the compressors and the reverbs, do actually have dry and wet controls. But the thing I find is, is that as you move the dry and wet control down, the level obviously drops um, as the two signals are being mixed slightly differently. And I find psychologically that's not what I want to achieve. When I'm putting effects onto a sound, I want them to sound bigger, I want them to sound better. That's what we're all kind of after. Um, and I find this method of doing things much more reassuring. Um, there are some pitfalls though, and this is one thing to be careful of. Every now and again you'll find a plugin that either doesn't report the processing time that it's taking, um, or it will introduce some phase issues. Now, I'm not going to go into phase particularly in this tutorial, but let me just show you what can happen. We're going to take the built-in saturator in live, uh, bring the volume right down. I'm going to go to town a bit on it. Now, it is a lovely sound of the saturator, and it's kind of sometimes what you'd like within your drum loop, so I'm just going to bring it in. Now you can hear the top end's gone, and that is because somewhere along the line, somewhere within this, there is a phase issue that is either adding a little bit of a delay that's not being compensated, even though I do have the compensation on, um, or it's splitting the uh, the audio into several frequency bands and doing different things with it. So anything that's particularly multi-band, you want to stay away from using in this kind of manner. 
Um, but you're not always stuck to, uh, obviously, the built-in effects. A lot of commercial effects you'll find work beautifully. Our favourite for doing this kind of thing has to be, and it's the plug-in that everyone is... Uh, is it's one of the most successful plugins, and it's so cheap as well. Is the Dada Life sausage fattener. So I'm going to wipe that in. Uh, uh, solo it, and let's go. Quite to town on it, and start to bring that in. And it does odd things to drum loops. This it can be brilliant in what it does. It really, uh, really brings out the slam of the snare and the slam of the kick quite a lot. So look, this is where we started. And that's where we've ended up. Now, obviously, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a cumulative effect. So as you go through things, things will get um, louder and louder. So I'm just going to drop a utility at the end. And we'll just do a little bit of comparison by grouping the groups up there. So that's even with game reduction, just to show you kind of re-level our affected version so that it's very similar, so that we can make a proper judgment about what's going on. But you can hear the thing's got louder, it's got it's got fatter, and it's got bigger. Now you'll also find out it will bring out certain rhythm elements, especially if you've got anything with delays on that you didn't even sometimes know were there sometimes, and it, then it becomes very, very interesting. Um, the great thing about Ableton with this system is if you come up with a great set of parallels that you really, really love, you can rename the actual chain, and we'll call this Loop Slam, and just save it as an entire preset. Uh, you can see quite a lot of... Uh, our favorites up here let me give you an example of a kind of posh version and as we go through these tutorials when i talk about posh versions it's using commercial plugins that sometimes aren't cheap but sometimes very much worth it we've got a uad card in this system and this is the uri 1176 the brand new emulations uh, i won't go into too much details we'll do it on another tutorial but let me just show you as these are modeling some of the transformer aspects of the original hardware having three of them in parallel one doing absolutely nothing one adding some grunge and one adding some bite let me show you what this can do so before after and if we add our previous and particularly with drums or anything with high percussive content this is how people are making their mixes sound so dynamic at the moment. It's a beautiful technique. Um, we hope you find some fun with it. We'll carry on with this and we'll show you next how to do this in Logic.